Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. God bless you. How y'all doing? I hope you're doing well. I know these are hard economic times. People losing their jobs, going through things, going through troubles in your marriage, and your heart is troubled. You're wondering, do I really trust the Lord Jesus Christ? Do I trust God? Got a scripture for you. Come on. Let's read John 14, verses 1 through 6. Here it goes. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now let's get some context here and really understand what is taking place. Here the disciples are in the upper room in John chapter 14. Now Judas had left out. He was about to go and betray Jesus and that was in the previous chapter. So they're in the upper room and John is different from the other synoptic gospels in that it records an intimate time where Jesus is having discourse with his disciples. So Jesus begins in the first verse and he says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Well, why were the disciples' hearts troubled? Well, if you look at John um, chapter 13, verse 33, you will see that Jesus was talking about going, suffering and going away. And then he also says that in John chapter 12, verse 8 and in verse 35. He talks about him going to the cross, suffering, dying, being buried, and raising from the dead. And they're wondering. They're getting troubled. You got to remember now, they have seen Jesus do marvelous things, raising the dead. And he's talking about he's not going to be with them much longer. Their hearts are troubled. So in John chapter 14, you get these... Um, comforting statements you see a discourse where one of the disciples asks a question you know their trouble is coming out so they ask a question Jesus comforts so it starts out with Thomas and I believe it goes to Philip and then um, Judas which is not Judas is scary but Judas um, asks Christ a question and Christ comforts so you can see that they are troubled and here comes Christ with the comfort comfort. So he begins, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And then he tells them, you know, that he's preparing a place for them. And then Thomas comes um, and asks a question. We, uh, we don't know the way, and I'm just putting it in my words. We don't know the way. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Now listen, Christians, I want you to be comforted by this. See, it's hard when you're not trusting God. The bills need to be paid. You might lose your job. You're troubled. You gotta understand that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life can't come to the Father but through him. Why would Jesus take an exclusive statement and cuff, comfort us with that? Why would he comfort the disciples with that? Well, there are three exclusives in that exclusive statement in verse 6. You have the way, the truth, and the life. Three exclusives. It's amazing. Hados, which is the way. Um, let me see if I can say this. Uh, the one, the one for the uh, the truth. 
Alathea, um, and Zoe. So those are the three uh, Greek transliterations of the, of the words that are used for the way, the truth, and the life. And that's exactly what God wants us to see. He wants us to see that he is the way. Remember in Acts 14, 12, where he says, there is no other name on which men may be saved. The way. He's the truth. He's the only truth. Jesus Christ. There is no other truth outside of Jesus. Only Jesus Christ. And he's the life. Remember in John chapter 12, verse 35, I believe. Or maybe I got that wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 35. I'm, I'm the resurrection. No, that's John 11. Yeah, I'm right. John, John 11, verse 25. Let me look it up. Let me look it up. Sometimes you got to go back in the Bible and, and look things up. Um, yes, John 11. Verse 25, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he shall die, yet he shall live. Jesus wants us to understand those three exclusives in that one exclusive statement to comfort us. See, when you're down and out, knowing you're last and you ain't got a job, trust Jesus. He's the way. Trust him. He's the truth. Trust him. He's the life. Exclusive. He's the only way. He's the only way out. Well, let, let me see what John MacArthur says. No, trust Jesus. He's the only way. He's the only truth. He's the life. Well, R.C. Sproul, no. Jesus Christ, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Why would he tell us in Matthew to bring our burdens to him and that he would give us rest? We have to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. When your heart is troubled, believe in him. Trust in his exclusive way. I know these times are hard. I know you're wondering where your next meal may be coming from. Some of you may be doing okay. But you need to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to put all of your trust in him. This has been Difference Maker. Saying to you, beloved, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. For he shall never leave you nor forsake you. God bless you, my dearly beloved.